This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. As a leader, I have to walk the talk. When I say I'm also practicing, I'm, I'm, keeping, I'm keeping the cows and kettles, the people, they should realize that, uh, are you doing this one? Oh, you're not doing that. It should not be a rhetoric. I'm a provincial QLTC coordinator in the province. I am a mobilizer too. When I look at the violation of rights of children, it hurt me so much. Africa, the last frontier, is a continent of diverse people, varied landscapes, and a land rich in social and natural resources. In spite of all this, the continent has been ravaged by slavery, plundered by colonizers, and has been badly affected by several post-colonial conflicts. All these have left a legacy of horrific violence, widespread poverty, and many of these countries are in urgent need of good leadership. In Northern Cape Kimberley, South Africa, Yolanda Johanna Slade is visiting a radio station for an interview. She works with the African National Congress, the ANC, which has been South Africa's governing party since the country's independence in 1994. All right, the time right now is 15 minutes after the hour of 11 o'clock. We are in the final I'm hour. driving to the, our local radio station where I'm going to discuss and have a conversation with our communities regarding social injustices. If you have just joined us, you are listening to your favorite radio station, which is Radio Tamaneng 89.1, the pulse of the Diamond community. I have a guest here in studio with us, and she goes by the name Miss Yolanda. For me, I look at collaborations. I look at partnerships. How do we bring on board um, other women from other or, 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 yeah, or, or, yeah. or other um, NGOs, NPOs, or participate in platforms mm -hmm. where we can have a voice, not only as I've indicated in South Africa, but how do we broaden it up to yeah, Africa? Yeah. When are we start having that discussion mm -hmm. and see what is happening in Africa? Yes. What is happening to men and to women? Yeah. Um, um, so that as we talk, we don't only think about shaping yeah. ourselves, but shaping the whole continent yeah. and finally having a, a word in shaping the world mm -hmm. because we must have our voices being heard. Uzalishaji bora, lishe bora, mazingira bora, kwa wote habaki mtu nyuma. Upper North, in Eastern Africa, Tanzania. The Semiyu region hosts the third largest number of pastoral communities in the country and is home to the Serengeti National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, shared with the Mara region. Yaya Nwanda, a member of the CCM, Chama Cha Mapinduzi Party, has been appointed as the new regional commissioner in Simiu. Simiu is one of the 26 regions of Tanzania, and the landmass of Simiu is 23, 23,000. And the majority of people in Tanzania, in Simiu particularly, they're divided into farmers and pastoralists. And the pastoralists are keeping 
cows, they're keeping goats, they're keeping sheep, and they're keeping some small chicken or whatever, the local chicken. Yes, and when it comes to the farmers, now then mainly they're producing rice, they're producing sweet potatoes, they're, pro they're producing, especially those are the food crops. They're f producing also the cassava tubes, the cassava. Uh, they also produce uh, beans, all those kinds of beans, yes. And then also uh, the for, the, for the cash crops, they are normally producing cotton. And in Tanzania, we are leading 60% of the cotton produced in Tanzania coming from Simeo. And in the, in the world, so only uh, Tanzania is ranked in number 50 in terms of producing the organic cotton. But in Africa, it is ranked in number one. As a regional commissioner, Yaya's mandate is to represent the president and act as a link between the people and the executive arm of government. As a regional commissioner, uh, I normally work with people and I'm, rep I'm representing the president of the United Republic of Tanzania, Her Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan. Therefore, uh, if you are representing the president in a respective region, then you are first people to work as the citizen. Ah. Oh, sour. Ah, yes, aunt. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yolanda Johanna Slade and Yaya Nawanda are from different parts of the African continent. They share one agenda to serve their communities in Africa. In the early 50s, African nations embarked on ambitious programs of nation building. At that time, remarkable progress was made by African countries. But the euphoria was short-lived. Within a short period of time, several nation states began to fall successively. As leaders became despots, poverty, lack of development, and poor leadership became the order of the day. The first generation of leaders, uh, Mwarimu Julius Nyerere, Kwame Nkrumah, Jomo Kenyatta, Haile Selassie, uh, Leopold Sedasego of Senegal, and, and so on, they were all visionary. And as visionaries, they thought about the future of their country. They are the ones who read the foundations of modern state uh, in Africa. And that is in the 1960s through the 70s. We must show the world that some of them have been wrong, that some of them have misunderstood us. And it's only by our action they will know that we mean business. Uh, and within that particular period, the country now moved from that euphoria of nationalism, the appeal to the masses and the support of the people to their political parties and political movement. And leaders uh, gave way to what you can call the age of dictatorship. This age was preceded by a lot of coup d'etats, takeover of governments by the military, takeover of governments by uh, underground movements. And it was the most turbulent phase on the African continent. Today, more than ever before, the demand for effective and systematic leadership development in Africa is increasing rapidly. The Mwalimu Julius Nyerere Leadership School, located in Kibaha, near Dar es Salaam City in Tanzania, is geared towards meeting this demand 
as it aims to nurture young future leaders to steer the continent towards its second liberation. The school is owned by six parties of the former liberation movement. And this is uh, Zimbabwe for uh, ZANU-PF, Angola for NPLA, Namibia for SWAPO, and uh, South Africa for ANC, and Frelimo for Mozambique, and for Tanzania, uh, CCM. I know there the are people who ask, was Tanzania also part of the fr uh, frontal states? Tanzania was the country which supported all these frontal states. And during that time, all these uh, parties had offices and they were supported by Tanzania. Inaugurated on March the 4th, 2022, the institution brings together six progressive political parties in Southern Africa with an aim of enhancing party construction and improving governance capabilities through cooperation within the continent and beyond. The training had taken us to various uh, program, especially how President Xi Jinping, the president of China, is trying to elevate poverty. And they gave us one example of Shibadong State, uh, Shibadong Village. Yes. Then we had a lot of discussion about Tanzania, uh, the forefather of this nation, Malm Judas Kambaragi Nyerere, and then the current president, uh, President Samia Sulu Hassan. All those efforts uh, which has been done since Tanzania attained our independence in 1961 to date, now connecting that one, especially in eradicating poverty, citing with examples from China as well. Then I had that knowledge and then now I'm using that knowledge now from China, from Zanpia, from my own president here, President Samia Sulu Hassan, at least now from different knowledge I got or received from the training now, for experience from China, experience from Tanzania, experience from uh, Mozambique, experience from Angola, experience from South Africa. Now I'm taking that knowledge, especially to help uh, my people I'm serving with, about 1.4, 1.5 million people whom I'm working with. What I take from it is the quest from the leaders that were there um, in bringing about the change that is needed, the unity that is needed for all of us to work together as countries, as liberation movements, um, to address the challenges that we are faced with. Challenges of unemployment, inequalities, um, poverty that is there, but to build Africa so that it's able to can uh, contribute to the world in making it a peaceful and harmonious environment to live in, all of us as people. The Walimu Julius Nyerere Leadership School brings to East Africa a state-of-the-art institution that was built in collaboration with the Chinese government. Well, the, 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 the current leadership in Africa need to intensify uh, what started in the 60s, that is creation of forums where leaders can talk and discuss uh, future. Because African countries are so small, many of them are so small, that the future of the continent is not in the, in the state per se, but in regional formations, whether we are calling the East African community or you're talking about the West, uh, economic community of West African states. That is the future. Larger markets, larger population, larger planning, that's where they are. Came to pay tribute and respect to you as we enter the sacred place. Um, we're asking for the path and we're asking for you so that everything that we do today must go well. Sisi Angena Manji. Sabo. We need the chief as the person that is, that is the highest. So we need the chief to be on board because as a chief, you are not leading from the back, you're leading from the front. Fortunately, here yeah, we have a hands-on chief that is involved in the lives of his people. After being trained at the Mwalimu Julius Nyerere Leadership School, Yolanda is back on the road serving her people. Her interaction with this unique place and its people will help her understand the problems that they're facing and how best to solve them.
don't we say it's time that we stand up together? This is what I've observed that we have amongst those that are at school, of school going age, but also having kids. Um, so it's a struggle really to be at school and to having to fend for your own child. It's a struggle, but you also see that there are those that have dropped out from school due to teenage pregnancies, I would say, not being able to fend for themselves, also for their children. Now, for me, this is the challenges that I've observed amongst the two families. It's poverty, unemployment, and I would say extreme uh, inequalities that are there within um, the families that we have visited. Okay. Mm. We brought this for her so that she has something for it. a small token of appreciation for a man. Okay. We are doing this uh, so as to get the real content and uh, uh, a good feed for the for the cattle for the cows, and we are mixing the uh, cotton cakes and we are also mixing with the uh, sunflower cake and some of salt as we have seen, so that at the end of the day you get a real content and. It helps a lot. It has all the nutrients and it's very helpful, especially for the cows. What I came to learn is at least I have to start fattening the cows. And I started with close to 40 cows. And I bought them with an average of $200 each. And then I came to realize that fattening cows, you don't need a lot of income. Maybe even if you have two cows, it's enough. Then I started, mine, I started with close to 40 cows. But why did I do that one? Because I want, if the project is well successful, now I want to implicate, I want to duplicate that one to, to my district commissioners so that they can come and learn from me now. And then that one we can adopt in our villages to tell people, especially the youth, instead of going to Dar es Salaam, going to Mwanza, going to Arusha in the cities, at least now you can even start with two or three or five, only five, you can even keep a small number of animals, you're fattening them. After that, you sell in a very high price. Like now I, started, I, I bought for $200. But now the price, if I want to sell one, I will sell about $700. In crop production, Yaya has partnered with Soko Ine University in Morogoro to include technology in agriculture with the aim of increasing yields and enlightening farmers on value addition, thereby increasing their income. Globally, over 125 million people around the world are, have deficiency in vitamin A, especially uh, sub-Saharan Africa. If you narrow down to, to Tanzania, almost, uh, almost uh, what should I say, almost 6% of Tanzania population are deficient in, 
in vitamin A. Orange fried sweet potato can be can be a can be add values and use in different in different form. Together with the Yahya and other and other colleagues in Tabora, let's say the project was was implemented. So the uh, so the women and youth was given a, a given a a seedling or, or vine to to cultivate a yellow free spot potatoes. And advantage of uh, this as compared to the normal sweet potato, the yield also is kind of is is a little bit higher as compared to as compared to to as compared to the normal normal. So the farmer they get more income out of the uh, uh, sweet orange free sweet potato than compared to the normal sweet potatoes. And we encouraged a lot of people to cultivate the the sweet potato and then to add the value, the value chain. Then instead of eating, only eating now, they can make cake, they can make uh, porridge out of it, and then it is very healthy. And they can even transport, instead of transporting the raw sweet potato from Tabora to Dar es Salaam, Tabora to Arusha, Tabora to Mwanza, now they can transport uh, a flower of sweet potato to even to Mtwara or different part of uh, of Tanzania. Then it helps a lot in terms of eradicating poverty as well as to increase the, stat the nutrition status at household level. As Yaya works towards integrating technology and research to ensure agriculture is improved, down in Kimberley, South Africa, Yolanda is still touching lives one household at a time. In the communities whom we have visited and houses that we did door to door on, we realized and I realized that it's majority, for example, women headed households where men are not there. Where are these men? And the women are unemployed. The women are having kids. Now you have to struggle to put food on the table to ensure that there is safety in terms of the home environment for the children as women. So I decided to um, mobilize some young women who have shared in the same vision, who have the same interest, who wants to bring about the change that is needed. And we decided to take it out of our pockets, as little as it is. Do it in your little corner with what you have in bringing the change. And that is what we did. We bought the paint. We went and paid an elderly woman's house who did not have anything. I mean, if she could, she would have done it herself, but she couldn't, and it's the reason why I find it and where I get satisfaction in really assisting those vulnerable. Fortunately, I have access to decision makers, to the leadership. So I do the groundwork and when I get the challenges on the ground, I give a call or I go back and report back to the leaders and say, this is the issues that I have faced with and that needs to be addressed immediately, like what I did in the village. Hey, Pam, how are you? How are you? I'm all right. I'm how good. Are you? Good, good. Good, good. What can I do for you today? All right, I'm coming to see the secretary. Okay. okay. Can no, I? No, let me not delay you. I'll Thank you so you. much. Right, Thank you. Come in. Good morning, secretary. How are you? Good morning, Yolanda. I am very well. How are you doing? I'm all right, sec. Oh. Very good, well, sec. I'm from okay. I just came to give a report back. Okay. Um, as she said, you get things because of the age 59 years old for a pension. Can you please ask us to give you best advice? What is it that how you can do in ensuring the advances to these parents? There have been noble and inspirational leaders in Africa, the likes of Patrice Lomomba, Thomas Sankara, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Mwalimo Julius Nyerere, and Nelson Mandela who all provided a manual script for good governance for the new generation of leaders. Among the seven key aspirations listed in Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, the African Union shared a 50-year development and transformation program for realizing the full potential of the continent. Malmjulis Nyerere thought is to unify the Africa 
and to unify all the Tanzanians. Therefore, Malimu, the good thing of Malimu, especially for us, uh, I saw Malimu, yeah, but uh, we used to, to learn in the classes about uh, Malimu's philosophy and Malimu's thinking. And one of the foremost I can say for all Tanzanians, we have come to learn that Malimu, among of the good things that has taught us, especially the youth of Tanzania, is to, 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 to work as a team that is one to unify all of us, despite of our differences in terms of religion, in, ter in terms of uh, tribes or whatever. We don't speak about tribalism in Tanzania. We don't speak about our, you are Muslim, you are Christian, we don't speak about that. We are speaking as a Tanzanian, one nation. We need a, we need to acknowledge our challenges. We need a serious young leadership that is com that that comprises of both men and women of determination who are focused who are united who speaks in one voice who understand the challenges that we are faced with but who are driven to want to bring about the change that is needed of our people every country in the world is still work in progress africa and its leadership must also be seen as work in progress and it is that emphasis on progress which you should have, that the leadership in Africa is progressing. And we're beginning to see a more hopeful and more enlightened and a country, a continent that is beginning to become more prosperous uh, as a result of the quality of leadership that is beginning to emerge.